Hey guys, this is Jack from Jack's Garage. Today I'll be installing the factory LED bed lights in my 2013 Dodge Ram 1500. Ready? Let's get started. Here's all the things that came in the kit. I've got two bed lights. I've got the entire wiring harness where we'll stick this to the ground in the front and then the power in the computer. And it also included all, of, I don't know, about 25 zip ties, some instructions, and the little clips that will go inside the lights. So these lights are like a rectangle shape and they actually doesn't go, doesn't mount to it. You actually push it through and then tighten it and the little nut kind of forces this in. Kind of like a toggle bolt. So the back of my truck does not have this piece where the factory light goes in. So I made a template myself after taking a piece of paper and kind of doing a pencil rubbing on somebody at works that had these from the factory. And so this piece, I just transferred to the cardboard, transferred it some cardboard, and then labeled it, okay, this is the top of the passenger side, and then we've got top of the driver's side, so we can slide it in. And the way I tested it after I cut it open was that you slide the piece through there, and then it's got this little tab on there. This little tab doesn't necessarily need to be on there. You probably could chop it off. But I wanted it to look just like the factory. So there you go, and you can pop your pieces through. So let's get in the bed and start cutting some holes. If your truck came with those holes factory, then you don't have to do what we're about to do. I cut these in last week and then put some touch-up paint inside of there. So what I did to get the actual template for this is went up to somebody's truck at work and stuck a piece of paper in there and then did a pencil rubbing on top of it and then when I got home I actually outlined it in a different color so then cut the hole out exactly and then transferred that to a piece of cardboard so we like using the cardboard so the paper doesn't get tore up so you have the cardboard there and I've got this one I finished it on the passenger side so if you slide it in you've got it and then you just flip it so when I set it over on the other side I have the exact same template for the driver's side. So let's see what it looks like in there. So you've got this little knob and that, that's what the bottom little tab there lines up with. So put the piece in there, pop those in and that's what the bed light's going to look like. So let's get started cutting it on the other side. So as you can see on my driver's side, I don't have anything cut out. So I've got a white paint pen. I'm going to slide this up into place. Got my driver's side labeled. Everything's pushed in. And I'm just going to color in my hole that I need to put in here. So once all that white's gone, and then the hole is the right size. And we can keep sliding the template up so we can see too. Oops, pull that off. Oops. Well, that stinks, but got that. So I'll let that dry for a minute and I'll get the bits. So I bought this one from Harbor Fate, the step bit. So it needed to go up to one inch. So I think it was about $8 from Harbor Freight. That one inch should be our exact size that we need. And then I put the blue on there so I know what depth when I'm going crazy to get it in there. So I'm gonna take a drill bit, go with the smallest one, and then work up in size. And then we'll get a file and cut the square edges down. And all I did was took the bit, went inside that little square. I wanted it to be a little bit smaller so that I have the space to file it. Make sure it's smooth. And 
one other thing, while you're pushing down on it, you don't want it to go all the way in and push really hard and then dent the other side of your bed. So you want to be careful with that. So I'm going to get my little file. And then we'll start testing it out. Make it a little bit bigger. Got that. Test this again. Looking good. Now I'll get the top one. Got the top one. Now, since it slid around when I was driving the drill bit through there, I'm going to try to use this hole punch here and get the center so the drill bit doesn't move around. Alright, now to use this step bit. Alright, looking pretty good. Then I got this step piece. I've got it set on one inch, and how I got the one inch is you can measure it, but if you just put the piece through there, it's set right at one. So just to help me when I'm shoving it in there, make sure we got the right size. piece left. Okay. Now watch your fingers when you put them in here. There's lots of little shavings still in there. I want to get all that out. Of there. Okay. Okay. Upsize that. Bit. We'll see what size we need here. That's 11, 64, it's a little small. Try this guy. That looks pretty good. So that's 7 32nd. Okay, I got all the metal shavings off there. Still feeling a little bit of roughness inside. All right, I'm gonna get out my touch of paint and touch up all of this exposed metal here. Then we'll let this dry up and mount the light on the other side. Doesn't have to be pretty. It's going to be covered up by the light. All right, we're ready to mount the light on the passenger side. It's got some, it's got some LEDs that point into the bed. It's got two up top. Got another two. Got five on this side total. Got one little one. It looks like it shines towards the tailgate. And then it's got the Ram logo in it. it actually, has a little Mopar piece here, kind of raised up. But I thought that looked really good. So. Find the little tab on the back and then just slide this thing through. All right. 
I can see it pass by, but before you mount it, you want to make sure that it doesn't get hung up on anything. And so this piece, so this piece is just going to kind of screw down, kind of butterfly out or wing out. Pop that one in, and then we'll pop the bottom one in. And I got a seven millimeter to tighten it down. Good. Mount some of that. Looks really good. Let's mount that. We might mount the other one on the other side. Okay. Put this through. Do the same thing. Kind of wiggle it down. You can see it popping through there. At the bottom hole. And then just kind of line it up. Do the same thing. Good there. So this shows you going down that one side, you're going down the other side, driver and passenger side, then wiring it up through the back right behind the receiver, and then it runs down to the driver's side, and then you attach to a ground under the hood. So I'm going to try to route it along the driver's side. It came with tons of zip ties, and we'll put those in. And then this piece gets routed through like one of the grommets in the firewall. So I'll get to start doing that now. So I'm going to mount that clip in this one. And then there's two other holes here where this clip will actually go right in. So we've got this one there. It's going to pop right in there. There we go. I'm going to take one of these zip dies and zip it over here. So I've been routing it right along this other wire here, right above the spare tire. It should be clear and free of any obstructions. Okay, got it right there. So here's my clip from the driver's side. Just gonna get this, plug it in, try to do it with one hand. Nope, can't do it. So I'm going to snip this off and then push it through here. No. Come on, buddy. What? I'll get you some chips. Okay. Just pop that in. So if you have a 2014 to 2018, you should have all the clips for this or the holes for it. Mine, since it's 2013, I don't have any of them. So now I'm going to just zip tie these up, keep them away from the exhaust. I've got everything hooked up to the lights themselves, clipped in. So you can see all of the new wire loom here is routed, comes up over the frame on the driver's side, and now I've started to go towards the battery up the front along the driver's side frame rail here. So there's actually some routing right now, and I'm just going to attach it to the piece that's already up there. I'm just going to get it up over the tank and stuff and get it all the way to the front. I'm right under the driver seat and trying to route it in the best place not near the exhaust pipe. So I'm riding it right along another 
um, another wire route right here. So I'm just running it right along it. Got it? Mm-hmm. Got it. So I've ran my little wire puller that has caught this thing. I'm gonna put some tape on it just so it doesn't get caught up inside the fender well. I figured this was the easiest way to route it to keep it away from the exhaust. So tape that up and we'll yank it through. The instructions show for us to attach it here. So I'm gonna just disconnect this. I'm gonna pop this off. And I'll get the wrench to loosen the ground. The cable we routed through the fender, right through the back there. I'm just gonna stuff some of it through. And then the instructions also say to poke a hole through the wiring harness gasket or this rubber grommet, whatever you want to call it, and then put some RTV on it just to seal it up so no water gets through. So I'm going to need a long one for this and then we'll take this off and attach the ground here. Got a deep half inch socket. Oh. Well, it loosened up from the base. So we'll pull that up. And we'll get our ground. And I'm just going to stuff most of this back down in the same hole I pulled it out of towards the fender well. So here's that. Ground here. Put it through and I'll put this one through. There we go. Then we'll put that little clip back, and we'll pop it on right there. Okay. That looks good. I guess it keeps it out of the way of this. All right, now I'm gonna get something to poke a hole in that down there. So I'm gonna try to poke a hole to the right, so it would be less likely to get water in the cab. And then when I poke it, I won't go too far, because I don't want to be poking in the back of some wires. So I'm just gonna, gonna just pop it in. All right. Okay. And then this is where it shows it on the instructions. That's that same boot there and then it shows you poke it through the bottom and then rounding it in. some pliers. Put the end in the pliers and then I'm going to just try to force it into that hole. Alright, there we go. And I'll just spread the pliers and pull it out. There we go. Just feed the wire into the cab. Now where I actually pull the hood pop, I gotta pull that down and then it says to push this pin down, slide it up, and pull the wire out and then get the panel out of the way. So then we'll work our way to get to the electrical box back there to put this pin in. Got two Phillips head screws at the bottom to get this panel off. One, and that one's over here. Okay, I'm gonna pop this out. This pin slides out sideways. Right there. 
All right, got the cable pull out, and then we've got the, I don't know why the picture didn't show it, but we've got the OBD sensor plug-in, and my little LED light here. Got to get those out next. I shouldn't have done it like that, but it's got that little retainer clip in there. Put that with my screws, and then seems like this thing just pops through. Fairly easy. That's good. Got that out of the way. So we got the panel out. Now, all the way over here, it shows this little computer, or whatever it is, that we need to get to the plug. So we're looking for the C1 plug that's at the top. I have no idea where this is. It's going to take me a minute to chase it down. And then it either, if the pin's not occupied in pin 5, if it's not occupied, then we have to cut the wire and solder it in. So let's hope that the pin doesn't exist and I can just slide it in. This plug is in a terrible position. So I'm going to take my phone, get a picture of what it looks like, because I'm going to have to pull out all of the plugs out of it to get to it, to be able to pull the wiring harness down at least to here so I can work on it. It's way up there. I got the one out that I need, but it only moves about four inches, so that's not going to be very helpful. I was watching the Boosted Motorsports video when he tied in the bed lights. So he did the exact same thing. The green plug here, he had said, doesn't have a pin in it. Mine doesn't either. So down here, he'd recommend tying into the white wire with the tan chaser. So I'm going to test that one out real quick and see if it works. Yeah. Let's see, I'm going to press the cargo light. Nice. Looks like it's it. And the cargo light off and on. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to cut, I'm going to disconnect the battery, cut this one, and I actually bought a little fuse. I'm going to run the fuse up here. So I'll pull my wire up, hold the fuse up here just in case this is too much load for that cargo light. We want that fuse to pop before this thing shorts out. So I'm going to cut this, solder it together, heat shrink it, and see if it works. The other side. Just finished up soldering and heat shrinking. I ran the little fuse up here, so the little access panel here will be a good place to get it if the lights go out for some reason. And then the wire that went from under the hood through here, I did the same thing and just routed it up. So it came through and then brought it over to this end. So I'm going to tuck everything under that um, little trim piece here, put it all back in here, and then it should all be hidden. So now let's test it and see what it looks like. The install wasn't bad. I was able to run all the wiring, put these in, put the holes in. That was all pretty easy. When it came to tying it into that, little panel. I thought that was going to be easy too, but it wasn't. I thought I'd be able to show you how to turn it on with the OBD Genie, but it wasn't even a thing. So tapping in the wires, kind of the last resort, but I really like the bed lights. I'm going to go get some LEDs for the other cargo lights, and they should match perfectly. Those are a little yellow, these are high white. So it isn't that bad. You could do it yourself, and I'd recommend it. So if you like the video, please like it, and if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe.